I think questions are one of the best tools that we have when it comes to evangelism. Actually, we have a God who asks questions. If you look in the account in Genesis and the Garden of Eden, it's God, isn't it, who says to Adam and Eve, where are you? Now, it's interesting, God didn't ask that question because he didn't know where they were, as if they were playing some kind of game of hide and seek with the creator of the universe. But God was asking that question, not so much for his benefit, but for their benefit. He wanted them to think through where they were at and what had happened. And we see the same thing with, with Jesus himself. In the Gospels, we see Jesus asking over 200 questions. Now, again, those questions aren't always for his benefit. He knows what people are thinking before they say it. But those questions are more for the benefit of the people who are being questions. So questions are not just helpful for us. Uh, of course, we're not God. So sometimes we have to ask questions because we need to know what the answer is. We want to get to know people. But questions will be helpful for the people we speak to. They'll unlock people's assumptions. They'll show what people really think about God. How do we relate the gospel to people? Because everyone's different. So questions will reveal what people's assumptions are about the Christian faith, about their background in terms of spiritual matters and so on. Um, questions will ensure that we have conversations. Uh, one of the problems we have is that when someone asks us a question, maybe why does God allow suffering, there's loads of stuff that we could say. We could speak probably easily for half an hour in answer to a question like that. But if we do that, the conversation has ended. We've just started preaching at people. So questions are a way to make sure that we continue to have conversations, that we're not doing all the talking, that actually we're both doing equal amounts of talking in a conversation. That will mean that a conversation is more enjoyable, that people want to continue the conversation and hopefully have more conversations in the future. I think sometimes people get put off having conversations with Christians because suddenly the moment they show any interest, they get preached at and it becomes not a dialogue, but a monologue. So questions help make sure that we're doing that. I think also questions help define terminology. Sometimes we can assume that what people mean by words is what we mean by words. They talk about faith or God or science and all these words carry meanings. I'll give you an example. I was getting my hair cut recently and the lady cutting my hair I discovered that I was a Christian and she said to me, I really admire your faith. Uh, I thought that was a bit of a compliment. Uh, but then I asked her the question, what do you think faith is? And after thinking for a moment, she said, faith is the ability to believe things that aren't true, uh, which I smiled at her and said, do you admire my ability to believe things that aren't true? Which, of course, made her think. Now, if I had just gone straight into a conversation encouraging her to have faith too, I would have been encouraging her to have something that I don't want her to have. I don't think Christian faith is believing things that aren't true at all, of course. So we want to ask questions so we can understand what people mean by the words that they use. And also, I think questions can get to the heart. Of course, we want to respond to people's objections. We want to understand what people are thinking. But we really want to get beyond the head down to the level of people's hearts. Uh, what is it that really stops you from becoming a Christian? What is it that's really motivated your objections, maybe, to the gospel? Things like that. So questions can often, after a time, get to the heart level and really penetrate on those deeper levels too.